We have Thurry, who uh, her position is Director of Stewardship, Education, and Communication, kind of like my title. <laughs> uh, uh, Patricia's going to tell us um, a little bit about the uh, association, what they do and that, but she also has some projects she thinks we might be interested in working with them on. Um, she's going to explain them, we'll, and I think we'll go from there. So, Patricia, thank you. <laughs> trying to return on. I can't tell my husband where I am tonight. A room full of young men. She said young men. Just because you're under 60. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Um, how many of you have heard of Central Lake Ontario Conservation? There you go. For a good reason or a not so good reason? <laughs> so as an organization, we have jurisdiction um, of a watershed area that goes from Ajax Pickering all the way to Clarington and Lake Ontario up to the Oak Ridges Moraine. And we're one of 36 conservation authorities across Ontario. And we really got going after Hurricane Hazel because there was a realization that folks were building the floodplains and when you had a major storm event like that, um, there was loss of life and property. So that's the main focus of our organization. And so we look at a lot of um, development um, proposals and issue permits for that development. And the goal is to keep that development out of those floodplains. And it doesn't mean you can't add on a garage or put in a swimming pool, but there might be some factors that need to be incorporated into your construction plan. So that's kind of the main focus of our organization, but we also offer engineering services. We have a huge GIS department, so we're constantly updating our mapping, and now with satellite technology, it certainly makes the job of a drafts person obsolete. A lot of the information we have is current and at our fingertips. We have a whole education department. Um, we teach curriculum-based programs in our conservation areas and give kids try and make a connection for them to natural areas. And I don't know if any of you have heard of the, uh, the it's called nature deficient, nature deficit disorder, and kids are really engaged with technology, which sometimes keeps them indoors, and our programs try to overcome that challenge and get them outside. Um, we also do a lot of monitoring. We have a number of coastal wetlands in Durham region that we collect data on so that we can um, make some restoration recommendations for those habitats. We, we are challenged. Our environment is under a lot of stress, mostly because of humans and our actions and activities. So a lot of our goal is to get up there and help people, give people the tools to help them do things differently on the landscape. Conservation Authorities 101. So we'll start with the presentation, I think. What, what am I doing as far as... There it is, is over here. <laughs> so, yeah, can you put it on the slide mode? I've, try, I've tried on this one. We've had some challenges with getting it on slide presentation mode. Okay. Um, they're pretty puny slides then. Let me see if I can... Is there a mechanism for me to change or that's your... Um, yeah, your I can job? do that for you. Okay. I only have one job to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next slide. <laughs> I just want to thank Don um, for inviting us here and, and meeting with us at the office to talk about some projects. And I guess it all started with the idea of making some bird boxes, which we love the idea. Um, and we get lots of requests over the course of a year from schools and groups and organizations that want to build bird boxes. Challenge for us. <coughs> Is maintaining and monitoring. Yeah, just sit it on this, uh, little okay. right there. Yes, right on the, the front thing. Gotcha. It's like having a TV show here. <laughs> um, I gotta find it. And, and so that was the idea. We wanted to build some bird boxes. Um, and Don and I talked about that. And so we just started looking at what could be done. And I'll make no secret of it on our probably 
We have close to 5,000 acres of conservation lands. Some of you may know them by name, Lynn Shores Conservation Area, Purple Woods, a number of those types of um, natural areas in Durham Region. And we put up those bird boxes, but somebody has to go out and clean them out, and somebody has to go out and check what's nesting in them so that we're collecting valuable data to help us with our, our protection plans and restoration. And the groups are very good at building the boxes, not so good on coming out and doing that follow-up work, at least on the long term. And for us, collecting data for one year is not enough to inform us in making our decisions. We need 25 years of data. So if we're going to put up our boxes, we want them to be in places that we think are high priority opportunities for nesting birds, and we'll be able to maintain and manage them ourselves. So, not that we won't do bird boxes, but we talked about some other ideas. So if we can go to that turtle slide. So I think there's 11 species of turtles in Ontario, of which nine are species at risk, which just means their habitats have been impacted. They're not reproducing um, to replace the existing population. So they're using looks. habitat. Those kinds of things. Um, our real challenge and female turtles if you've ever seen a turtle on the road in June it is typically a female and she's looking for a place to lay her eggs so her favorite spot because is the shoulder on the road MTO gravel mix whatever it is is the preferred substrate likely because um, there's been encroachment on the wetland or the home wetland of that female, so maybe loss of nesting habitat. So they do adapt and they do find other sites. Snapping turtles, which is what's on the screen, probably don't start breeding till 30, 40 years of age. So when you see that female, it's taken her a long time to become, um, be able to reproduce. And very often they're run over by cars. So that's usually the, the end. The end outcome, unfortunately. So, one of the species, you can go to the next slide, please. Come on, Rob. Oh, I know. Oh, Good job. Good. 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 Anybody know what species of turtle that is? Painted turtle. Painted turtle. Midland painted turtle. And it's not a species at risk. It's probably one of the few turtles in Canada that is not listed because it is kind of all along the border between the U.S. and Canada and all the provinces, so it, it does fairly well. But again, we're seeing nest predation, so the turtles will lay their eggs either on their wetland or on the road, and within 24 hours, the coyotes, the stumps, whatever's happened along that particular nest, they'll dig it up and eat the eggs. It's a, it's a food meal. So we'll go to the next slide. And habitat for these guys is a bit challenging. Yeah. It worked. Um, they like a place to bask. The reptiles, they need to elevate their temperatures to get moving. So um, in this particular wetland, the habitat is a grocery garden. Um, so some of our urban wetlands are challenging. Really, all they need is a basking log. So that's uh, something that we've been able to work with the community to create. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, we had some summer students one year help us just wood some cedar that we had been from one of our uh, properties and uh, loaded uh, them up with a marine grade rope and tied them onto a concrete block and into the pond they went and within minutes they were being used. So, um, so we know that we can enhance habitat for species like turtles. Take the next slide. One of our females Heading down our shoulder, we'll go to the next slide. So the way she lays her eggs is basically her back feet are what digs that, digs out that hole, and it, it can be about 12 inches to 18 inches deep. And then she'll lay about 40 eggs. I think the next slide shows, shows the eggs. And obviously she's leaving her scent there, which is how the predators find those nests. Um, she will cover it up and leave the site and head back to the wetland and if she has to cross the road to get there, that increases the chances of her, or decreases the chances of her survival as well as the survival of her young because they are um, programmed to go back to that same wetland. Don't know how, but that's the magic of nature. Next slide. One of our ladies having some challenges. 
And this is, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the role, but down by Bowenville Marsh in Clarington. And we've had the community now for the last six or seven years placing nesting protection structures on the nest literally within 24 hours of the turtles nesting. So they'll be walking the street in the trails looking for that activity. Next slide. That, that's, a, that's a nest that's been predated. It doesn't look like too much went on, but the skunks and raccoons, you know how their hands are, or their feet are like hands. They literally just dig in and scoop up the eggs one by one. Next slide, please. And that's one of our young that was not so, so lucky. And the, the young turtles emerge, so the females are laying in June, it's about 16 weeks for them to go through their, their development as an egg. Temperature, temperatures will impact the sex of the eggs that hatch in a particular year, so some year you may have more females, some years more males. Sometimes just where the eggs are within the nest is impacted by temperature, obviously cooler towards the bottom of the nest will impact the 